Could this be the future of air travel? Right behind me is Whisk's fifth generation air taxi. It's electric powered and it's autonomous. There's no pilot. And we're gonna watch this fly. We're also gonna take you behind the scenes at Whisk HQ, where we're gonna see the sixth gen aircraft. That has four seats and that's gonna be the one that goes to market. This is gonna be really cool and you're gonna get a look into the future. Welcome to airplane mode. We're here at Whisk HQ in gorgeous sunny Mountain View, California, and here they're researching and developing new wing technologies, autonomous flight, everything that's going to come together to create the future of travel. Let's go. I'm so excited to see this, I have about a million questions, and yeah. I think you've got about a million answers. I got a million answers. The most obvious thing to me is there is no seat for a pilot in there. What does that mean and how is that happening? Yeah, so obviously this aircraft is designed to not have a pilot on board, but the system is designed to have a person sitting on the ground supervising the aircraft. These are electric motors. They're a lot like the motors that are on an electric car. These motors in the front here are actually designed to both be vertical and also to tilt down and be horizontal in orientation. So the idea is that these aircraft are designed to operate close to where people live. You have to be able to take off and land vertically, but then fly like an airplane. Where will be the first places that this will operate when you're ready to go? I think initially one of the markets that we see that will be potentially very valuable will be airport transfers. One of the benefits there is that you're operating out of an airport that already has infrastructure for aircraft. Eventually we'll see vertiport to vertiport, so places that aren't airports right now, start to become connected. Let's get inside. What do we have here? You know, you may have a backpack, so each person has a space here. We have charging for your phone here, the only button on board. And what this does is it actually calls a hospitality manager. So I see some rather lovely large display screens in front of me. What's going to be shown on here? For an autonomous passenger experience, people really want to be able to understand the context of what's happening, where they are and where they're going. And that really helps people to anticipate and to be able to feel safe. So let's talk about safety. Yeah. How do you think about that? What are the priorities there and what are you doing to ensure that this is safe? So we design around a target safety level that's actually pretty similar to what um, you would experience in large commercial airplanes. And that turns into incredible amounts of redundancy. So with no pilot on board, you must be controlling operations from somewhere. Let's go to what a operating center looks like. This is the autonomy lab, or think of it like an operation studio. In this lab, we actually have people that will talk to air traffic control. That is the role of the multi-vehicle supervisor. What you'll notice is that these are a keyboard and a mouse. There is no ability to fly the airplane with a joystick. These are incredibly automated systems, and generally what a supervisor does is approve a flight plan that is suggested to them you know, by the aircraft and by the automation itself. What is your reasoning for why you've gone autonomous? We think it'll be the end state of this system, so we're going directly to it. We're really excited by the fact that autonomy brings both a safety uh, element to this and then also the, the sort of network operator value to it and that comes from being able to move the aircraft assets around in a way that is very flexible. This is the product design studio. This place is for industrial designers and user interface designers to prototype. Okay let's go look at some stuff. You'll see a lot of 3D printed stuff. Are you 3D printing right here? Yeah. These are fresh off the printer yesterday, looking at some various grips in the cabin, different geometry, and this is Braille included on the grip itself. Oh, wow. You want to communicate to someone if something is safe to use or if something is dangerous. Which one of these feels safe and which of those feels dangerous? Safe, dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Having that tactile reinforcement of, hey, this is a grip, this is safe to use, or hey, this might be that emergency handle and I should be playing with that. Because there's no pilot, there's no crew there, it's all about like guiding people in a way that they might not even be aware of. But That's exactly right. And this is exploring how to do that with form. And then we're also reinforcing it with the colors, materials, and finishes. Can I get in here? Yes. Let's talk inside. Now this is nice, <laughs> wind in your hair. <laughs> not the most aerodynamic solution. What's it gonna feel like when that first aircraft takes off with a passenger in it, a real paying passenger? Whew. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long journey. I'm excited to see it happen. 
Me too. Hopefully I'm going to be one of those passengers. This one's not going to fly off when I get in there, is it? No, I'm not at the switch. <laughs> and I think what I really want to do is see this fly for real. Is that possible? Absolutely. Hello, Mike. Hello. Mike is one of the test pilots here at WISC, and today we're going to be seeing something exciting, I'm told. What is going to happen? We're going to showcase to you Gen 5, basically showing you the full capabilities of the aircraft, vertical takeoff, transition outbound to a wingborne flight, stop midair, turn around, come back, and we'll do that several times to showcase the aircraft's full capabilities. Well, I can't wait. I think it's time to get this thing out now. It is. Can I take a ride with you to pull this out? Okay, let's go. This is so exciting. It's the most beautiful morning out here in California. Zap in position for liftoff, flight plan 810. Selecting liftoff now. So cool, the plane has just taken off over there and is heading right down this runway. You can still see it, this little yellow dot. And what's really notable is it's so quiet, so graceful, the way it just like floats up, sets off on its merry little way. Pedal turn, about to accelerate. I'm really seeing this for the first time, it's pretty incredible. Ground contact, touchdown. Autopilot state is off. Hands are stowed. Post landing checklist complete. Perfectly executed test flight that we've just witnessed. It was really quite incredible. It's not quite like anything you've ever seen before. It doesn't move like a helicopter. It certainly doesn't move like, an, like a normal fixed wing plane when it's going up and down and turning. I want to be in one of these planes and actually I can't wait for technology to take us to a place where I'm able to jump on board one of these. Would you go and fly on a self-flying aircraft? Or well, maybe you'll get to see me doing it in another season of Airplane Mode. <laughs>